Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome. Welcome to Facebook Live. It is the 17th of November, year 2021. Hope everyone is uh, doing well and is preparing for the Thanksgiving week weekend. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving here in the United States. Um, it's time to get together with family. So hopefully everyone is uh, generating more consciousness, generating that presence power to meet all the family and friends, extended family and friends. Uh, we're going to welcome our panel members who are here, um, as well as our fellow members that are here and have become a constant presence um, on the Facebook Live. So we welcome April, who is a psychic and a spiritual teacher. Welcome April. And uh, we have Ken with us, who is a fellow member, as well as Patricia. Good evening to all of you. And um, we had a successful weekend um, having a workshop. So if anybody's interested, the next time we have a workshop, thank you, April. Thank you for all that you've done. For the workshop, we thank all the other um, session leaders, which was Kelly and Kelly, his partner, um, as well as uh, Lakshmi did a beautiful session on mantras, two beautiful sessions, on, one on Saturday and another on Sunday, as well as the Leanne. So I wanted to start off with this uh, question that somebody asked. I didn't email it, so I can't put it on. I'll probably type it while y'all are speaking. Um, so somebody asked Eckhart Tolle, you spoke of the act of complaining, how it strengthens the ego. If we have witnessed an unconscious act, can we talk or do you not share about it to another, but in a state of neutrality, or remain in a state of neutrality. If we react blindly without consciousness, then we may worsen the situation. If we just observe the situation with awareness, the injustice may grow. Where is the clear cut direction to bring peace? Does that make sense, April? And I will type that in, thank you. I think it makes sense, but I think it is definitely a difficult question. <laughs> it's, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, and I don't know that there is a clear cut answer. I don't remember. I remember that question, but I don't remember Eckhart's response. So um, I'm trying to think of what have I done in those situations? Um, and I think it kind of depends on the situation. You know, if somebody's getting hurt, of course you want to do something. Um, but I think that the ability to observe unconscious acts, uh, that happens daily. Uh, you know, you can see it where I live. You can see it in Walmart. You can see it in Myers. Um, the gas station, just driving down the road, uh, everybody with the road rage. And I do think that one of the keys is not getting emotionally involved, not getting emotionally attached to the situation. I think that's one of the keys. Um, should I talk about it? That is a tr that's a tricky question too because if it if it really bothers you and it's going to sit on you and sit in your energy, then yes, you need to talk about it to release it. But if it's just going to be gossip, no, we don't want to talk about it. But you know, of course, what I do for a living, and I really cannot count how many times I've heard somebody say to me, I never knew that it would help just to talk. I never knew it would help just to express all these things that I've had on my chest for so many years. So if it's something that really bothers you, emotionally bothers you, upsets you, 
and you feel like you need to talk about it, yes. But if it's gossip, I would say no. Um, so for me, I do a lot of observing um, more than interacting or getting involved. Of course, you know, again, we're not talking about somebody actually getting hurt or a dangerous situation. But for the most part, I do usually just observe and understand that that's where those people are at. Um, there's been times where I have said things and I don't know if it was the most appropriate situation. Um, I remember observing a couple one time, uh, it was kind of in a school setting and you could tell this was actually a female was being very, very abusive um, to this guy, to the husband or the boyfriend. And um, I kind of made eye contact with him and just sent him energetically, just sent him like this love and sent him, you know, you deserve better. But it wasn't really appropriate for me to say anything at the time. There was other people around. So you got to kind of take the whole thing in. But I think for this question, what we're kind of looking at is one, we don't really want to get involved in other people's emotional stuff. We don't want to get involved in other people's problems. Um, you have to realize that everybody's at their own state, that they're on their own journey. They're learning their own lessons. And unless somebody's really getting hurt, I probably would not. And then I would not talk about it um, in a gossiping manner unless it upset you. Perfect. Now I can see everyone. Sorry about that. I lost everyone's video. I can see people. So um, when he says complaining, uh, you spoke of the act of complaining, how it strengthens the ego. So we couldn't, we shouldn't be complaining to, you're saying we shouldn't be complaining to 10, 15 other people. Oh, look at this person did this, look at this person. Um, I think energetically, we actually get locked in with the other person, right? As Dr. Joe Dispenza says, that's the uh, entanglement. We never separate from the other person. We are locked in that judgment of whatever that person is saying. Yeah, and we're strengthening the story, the narrative. We don't want to do that. And then when they're saying react blindly, we don't want to react blindly, but we may choose to not act. And that may be in consciousness, choosing not to act, right? And so how do we dissolve the situation? Um, the way to dissolve it would be like from presence, you can neutrally say something. Like if somebody's hitting another person, you can just calmly say, please don't hit. Instead of energizing them by becoming angry with them and calling them names or whatever right? Like you, you were saying, you were sending them love, sending that person love. So perfect. Thank you, April. Thank you for all the guidance. Um, Ken, did you want to say something about this? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, April. So, so much that you said hit the nail on the head. And it's really funny. About three hours ago, I was having a conversation with somebody and I said, the thing that I'm learning is that there's a language underneath the language. And it's something where if I don't agree with somebody, I'm learning just to pause and listen. And if it's a reaction that I don't like, that... I'm realizing that that's something in me that is uh, mirroring from the other person. So I'm learning that there's a vibration 
even in my vibration. So we can feel each other's energy, even if I don't say anything. And that is a way of communicating. So it's something where I'm learning with that. And my advice for something that comes up is to either pray, meditate, pray for the other person, and just fully listen to them without reacting. That way, that person can actually feel their own response without me adding something with a response. So it's, um, I feel like I'm just entering this new experience. And um, it's really been um, really, really valuable that I do more listening rather than responding and reacting to others if I don't agree. So thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you. So active listening, listen with your whole body, listen with every cell of your being, and maybe the situation will dissolve from that listening. Mm -hmm. And our reactivity will dissolve as well. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. So I see another person from our uh, normal Q&A panel. Caesar has joined us. Good evening, Caesar. Good to see you. Um, Caesar is a channel and a spiritual teacher. He's been on the Facebook live Q&A panel for a long time. Uh, he does not need any introduction. Uh, did you see the question posted? I tried to repost it back in the chat for you, Caesar. Um, if you want to respond to it. Thank you. And I think you heard April's response. Um, I actually had to put her on mute because I couldn't focus on the, the question. I caught the tail end. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so, you know, everybody spoke about doing nothing. Um, woo -wee. That that term means um, action was doing. And, and that is also a, a response, right? So sometimes that is the best, um, you know, road you can take as far as that goes. However, um, Ken mentioned about, you know, you must first of all, fully listen um, 100% without allowing thought to rush in because once that happens, you quit listening. You know, you're still hearing them, but you're no longer listening. And, um, and if you can, you know, be present and give somebody your, full attention when they're talking without the judgment or without having thought rush in, then there's a pretty good chance that if, uh, uh, you know, um, an action is required, it will come from that place of pure consciousness. Um, and maybe if you incorporate the mind and bring mindful and mindfulness into the game, um, you know, always move in the direction of love or compassion. I just had a similar situation with a dear friend of mine had a, a his daughter was eight years old and had an incident at school where she fell and hurt herself um, and landed in a big puddle of mud. And all her, even her own friends were laughing at her. So it kind of broke her down a little bit, but she was physically hurt and mentally hurt at that point. And when she went into the office, the secretary there was on the phone and, um, you know, said the, she told her, yeah, you can call your dad. And she didn't know how to use the phone because you had to dial nine, then zero to get out, and then the area code. And so the, the child asked, you know, I don't know, please, you know, and she kind of yelled at her a little bit. You know, she was on the phone with somebody and said, these damn kids just, I mean, I swear to God, they just don't know how to even use a phone anymore. And and that's when the child broke down and, and told dad. So dad arranged a meeting with his wife to go down and speak with the, you know, address it. And so he called me on his way down and said, you know, I know I need to handle this with compassion. You know, always say lean into it with compassion, follow that. And um, it, because, I mean, if you feel you must, you know, a lot of times no response is a good response, first and foremost. If it's uh, out of 
you know, if you are responding, let me read the last part of the sentence again. This is okay. Take or do not share about it. Okay, if you feel you you need to say something, um, then you definitely, most definitely, do say something. And again, you say it out of compassion and love. Bring it from that place. Um, and you know, and then once that's done, it obviously has to be done at that point. Um, you know, because the longer if you don't say something when you felt as though you should you know, that can conjure up some other, you know, feelings of maybe resentment that you didn't say something because you felt like you needed to say something because it was going to benefit somebody else. Um, and, you know, that has to have nothing to do with yourself as far as proving, you know, a point of being right or not. You know, them are opportunities to, you know, maybe if you can help somebody grow just a little bit in any way, um, with some words, uh, regardless of, you know, I mean, if you're in that place of presence, one, you're not going to take things personal anyways, if I'm reading this right. Um, but whatever you do, if you do, um, as long as it's coming from, you know, a place of love and, um, you know, pure consciousness, um, compassion, you know, when it's addressed with them at the center of what you're going to release, no matter what you do or say, you can never be wrong. That's working with source energy. And having said that again, you just can't be wrong when you are working with the energy, the same energy that creates worlds. It's hard to be wrong if there even is a wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caesar. I'll move to Patricia. Patricia, did you want to say something about this topic? Or you had any questions? And I'll check the yeah, group. I, I, yeah, I have both. So I think awesome. that April, Ken, and Caesar, they all of them like address the same here issue from their unique perspective, but basically going to the main answer that each moment would be different. It's situational because in each situation, I think it depends what state of consciousness I am. So if I am conscious and present in that moment, and I'm noticing that someone else is acting out of unconscious, I would not complain about it, right? It's just like, because I am present. So in a sense, if I find myself that I want to complain, it's like, oh, am I aware? Am I present? Because I'm just about to complain. <laughs> so it's kind of will bring us back to our own you know, state here. Because complaining is really, what will it do? It will judge the other person. It will criticize the other person. So there will be not a judge, like any positive outcome possibly can come from that. So I can suggest listening and maybe energetically providing. So it's almost the situation will uh, play itself out in, an, in a sense that the other person will realize, oh, they will be unconscious and they end their act and will not fuel it anymore. But like Caesar, the example that Caesar brought that it actually, there was some wrongdoing in the process. So we, we want to address what needs of ours or the child's needs were not addressed. So maybe the way, it's not maybe not a complaint, but just um, communicating with the person that was unaware what we would like instead without maybe attacking them in the form of, oh, I don't want it, I don't appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. So that would be the complaint that would add bad to the situation. But maybe just, you know, in a calm environment after still feeling like I need to address this because there were some needs that they were not met out of that child that needed assistance instead was you know there was something something went wrong <laughs> but instead of you know 
making the doer the bad person and complaining, just addressing the situation on that neutral way, maybe. Just so it is some kind of lesson we all learn and maybe helping the other unconscious secretary to actually come up of, out of her unconsciousness the next time because she can catch herself and learn, you know, without feeling, you know, attacked or criticized for, you know, what happened in the past. So the question is, you know, how make sure that in that moment we are conscious. So if the complaining arising right in us, when, when will the choice happen? I mean, this is obviously asking for, okay, what is the clear cut? Meaning we make a choice. So uh, how can we make that choice? Thank you, Patricia. April, you want to answer that? Um, when, okay, something is happening and here comes the complaint, the thought formation that is a complaint. Where does the awareness arise that I'm about to start complaining and I need to pull it back, right? That's what your question is, Patricia? Yeah, I think so. So it's like our job would be if we already know, if we are at the state, oh, should I complain or not? Is that the awareness or it's still we, we kind of trying to feed something again instead of just being quiet and give it energy and just, you know, provide the presence in that very moment. Um, so it's again, it's... <clears throat> Again, it depends on the situation. And as we are on this journey, I always tell people that it's a journey. It's a process. It's a learning process. And you may not always be present. You may not always be awake. And I don't know that we're supposed to. I think as spiritual people, as spiritual teachers, uh, gurus, whatever, we have this idea that we're supposed to do this perfectly, but the fact is, is we're human and you will have emotions. You will have reactions. The more you practice it, the more you create that awareness, you step outside of yourself and, and observe. And the more you stay in, like Caesar was saying, stay in presence power, the more that's where you're at. That's the more that you don't have to think about it, the more you will be it. It will become natural more and more. Your reactions to things will become less and less because you are maintaining presence power. When you maintain presence power, you maintain peace for all and everything, even the bad things. You understand that there's a purpose, there's a reason. And so the choice um, comes in when. So in when Eckhart talks about being able to notice the anger and the more that you notice the anger at first, you're going to do it at the end and you're going to be like, oh, I did it again. And then you're going to start doing it in the middle. And I've caught myself doing that where I'm starting to run my mouth and then I notice I'm running my mouth and then I'm like, you know what, I'm going to walk away. And I walk away and then in the beginning, and now because I have been practicing presence power, I've been practicing acceptance. I now can catch it before it even begins. That person walks into the room. I know I can feel it then. And I say to myself, okay, get in presence power because this challenging person isn't coming. They're coming. <laughs> They're almost here, right? But you can do the same thing in the grocery store. When you notice that this tension is happening, you can snap yourself and say, okay, presence power. You can do that the more you practice it. So it's a practice. Hi, 
Thank you, April. That that was useful. Maybe maybe even I go further that um, it it's almost an indicator for us that we're not present all the time because if we were maybe energetically we wouldn't attract things to complain about, <laughs> right? Or um, even maybe witnessing. I don't know, but that's different. <sighs> We all it's, kind of moving together <laughs> up. It's incredible. Uh, right before this uh, Facebook Live Q and A panel started, um, April was saying, "I miss Louise," and Louise is online with us. So we have the power to manifest, right? Here comes Louise. Louise is online with us. Uh, welcome, Louise and Cecile and uh, Christina. Hello to everyone. Um, what I wanted to say about that is, um, as we grow in presence power, it's not so much as we attract um, something that is unconscious. I feel we are more aware of our emotional field. So that slight irritation that you can feel like a flicker in the bottom of your tummy, right? Uh, when the like you're standing in the grocery store line and somebody is being uh, like, they have like 50 coupons and now the cash register person is trying to scan 50 coupons. And now this person has to run back in, the, in there and pick up three different things. And they take out two items that are broken or something happened and they are irritated about it. And they're fighting with the cash register person that they wanted replaced, right? Like maybe a sack broke or something. And we are the next in line, right? And we're waiting for this person to check out. And what would have taken five or 10 minutes, it now is taking 20, 25 minutes, right? So that slight irritation, that presence power, what April is saying, we will know of the emotional field. What we are monitoring is not so much as our thoughts, but we are monitoring we become so good about monitoring our emotional state. That there's that slight flicker, right, April? And then I need to pay attention. And the moment we pay attention, it dissipates. Because attention, you like that you shine the light of consciousness on it, right? Oh, here comes my irritation. And you go, oh, I'm... This is the present moment. I need to look around the grocery store. There's so many beautiful things. Let me admire them while this person is checking out. There's a reason why I'm, I'm having to wait here, right? The universe somehow conspired for me to wait here for what is, you know, like, and especially because uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza says about the quantum field and infinite possibilities. I don't know why I am waiting there. There's some reason why planetary intelligence, and there's so many times that uh, chance encounters happen, right? Just because your flight got delayed, uh, you'd meet somebody, some friend, or you will meet this really amazing person just because your flight got delayed. You wouldn't have met them if you, you would have gone on the flight and you would have gone away. But just because your flight got delayed, now you met this amazing person or you had this amazing meal or something happened, right? Because of the change in situation. So yet it's entirely different when you, uh, my best vacation in my life has been to Colorado with a friend who um, is not an Eckhart Tolle follower, but she does uh, spiritual practice. She does Rad Yoga meditation. Everything went very smoothly. We arrived at our plane it smoothly, got on the flight smoothly. We got to our hotel, everything very, very smoothly. Each incident, like just as though it, the world just unfolded, but I know two people were in presence, right? We would go for a long hike, come back and we were in a hot tub. Like nobody was around. We had the hot tub in between two 
huge mountains. You're sitting in a hot tub, two people, and there's nobody else around because it was October. It was off season, ski off season. It's like what more perfect moment that you want to give yourself, right? So, so that was that was a gift of presence. <laughs> but maybe I just had a th thought. Maybe that's a thought, but it was out of presence that maybe when we feel that flicker, when we witnessing that act, we take care of the flicker first. And maybe when the flicker is gone, so we acting out of present, asking ourselves a question, what would be my goal now to, or intention to address it, right? If, we, if there is still need to address it, if it's, if it's, I would like to now when the other person is done doing his unconscious work, I could have a chance to share presence with them or, you know, what is then, if there is need for acting, maybe it will come from a different place and not just complaining. We could we could say uh, like uh, one one example would be what what is an example that everyone can think of here on the panel and online as well of unconscious act like maybe you went checked into a hotel and now the bed is not made or it's very dirty the room is really dirty right you expect a very clean spick and span room and now it's dirty. So Ken, you want to talk about what would you do? And then I'll move to Caesar. What would you do? And let's see how consciousness responds to an unconscious situation. Go ahead, Ken. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> what I wanted to say, what would I do if I went into a room? And uh, well, I would call the front desk and let them know the situation. And um, I wouldn't like it. And um, that would just, mm, I think I'm going to pass and let Caesar speak <laughs> of that. <laughs> and, and I think I, I actually, I was actually wanting to talk about something else about being present that I guess that I'm really, really seeing. And, um, go, ahead and, and go ahead and talk about what you want to talk about being present and then we we'll move to Caesar and ask him the question. Okay, thank you. Thank very you. Much. Uh -huh. Thank you. So what, um, to me being present, what, what I'm really learning, it's, it's, it's maintenance. Every morning I go to a meeting, I go to a 12 step meeting every morning. And to me, that's part of my spiritual practice. And I make sure that when I do get up in the morning that I pray and I meditate and I say some prayers and I make sure I eat good. And every day I'm conscious uh, even of doing a workout physically. So with presence practice, I'm learning this aspect now of my life to be present and in order to do that practice makes perfect. I, and, and I want to master it. So that there is just going to be with like-minded people. It's, it's going to be reading what I need to read, read the uh, power of now. Uh, being with other like-minded people is like incredible. So it's just any, any new experience that I'm going through, I'm just, um, it, it's amazing watch out what you think about because it will come to you and more and more i'm really really seeing that so it's it's something where i'm addressing the way i'm thinking and the way i'm being and um just just being aware and 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 and, and being in that in that present presence power it's it has a communication that it's it's almost like it's it's gratitude and it enhances the five senses 
on my thinking. And then when I'll see people, it's almost like it's no mistake that the people I'm seeing or whatever I'm reading, it's almost like an extension of what I'm thinking about. And it's really like, to me, it's, it's a miracle on how the synchronicity and how things just, just play out. So that's what I really wanted to say. So. Beautiful. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. And the more we practice that, Ken, uh, the more deeper we go into presence. Presence does not become like, uh, we will experience presence just normal, like get up and go to the coffee machine and there's presence, right? We wake up and brush our teeth and we feel the presence. Like mm -hmm. there's a toothbrush and while we are brushing our teeth, we are experiencing presence. It doesn't have to be that, uh, oh, I need these practices to be present. Just our normal day becomes filled with presence. So that's what happens as our practice grows stronger and stronger. So Caesar, instead of asking the question I was going to ask, uh, I checked the, uh, our live feed and there's a question from Vishaka. Uh, the question is, I'm stuck with a situation where I think if one particular issue is resolved, then I can live my life fully. Should I wait for it to get resolved? Is there any other way of breaking free? And Uh, yeah, no, don't wait for the situation to get resolved. Perhaps it maybe already is resolved. Um, you get there by realizing uh, you're already there. <laughs> um, okay, so let me see here. I am stuck with a situation. Okay, three things we can do in any given situation is change it, right? If we can't change it, we remove ourselves from it. Um, and either the two fully accepted as if you had chosen it. Um, so you're waiting for a particular situation to get better or resolved. Um, as maybe you had contacted a, a live psychic and they told you that this is definitely going to get resolved. Do we even know it's going to get resolved to your, to your liking? Um, that would be something that I would bring the mindfulness part of it in. Um, that's the reality of it. Um, what if it you know, gets worse? I don't know the situation or the particulars of it, but that could go one way or, or the other. Uh, we just don't know sometimes. Um, and, and just that whole concept right there um, suggests that there's no presence involved in relinquishing the story. Because when you're waiting for something to get better, um, there's, to me, that goes hand in hand with some resistance, which also goes hand in hand with some suffering of some sort. Um, you know, when you think something is lacking from your life, what you're saying is, this moment isn't good enough for me. It's hard to say I'm grateful, but when this or that happens, um, so you have to find the, uh, the, 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 you know, the portal, <laughs> get, get into the present moment uh, is the best thing you can do. And, you know, Abe, Abraham Hicks always says you cannot get, you know, from sad to happy. And what she means by that is that I'll give you a very similar description of what she said. Um, when you are planning a vacation and you're working the extra 20 hours a week, you're working 60 hours a week to pay for this vacation that you're going to go on for one week. It's not very pleasant working 60 hours a week. You know, and then you go through all the uh, the legwork of you know the hassles, of, you know, setting up your hotels and your uh, you know your vehicle when you get there, and 
you know, dinner with these friends here and dinner with them friends there. And oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then when you get there and you know, you're spending all this money that you just saved up for six months, you know, to go spend in one week, you know, there's some things going on up here going, <laughs> and then the ride home, of course. So, so the vacation when you get there is not as enjoyable either because, you know, the moments that led up to getting there weren't very pleasant. So there's no way you can enjoy that when you do get there if the road to there was not pleasant. Um, yes, I mean, you know, that's hard because then it's, you know, it's miserable saving. I don't want to, I got saving up all this money for six months. You know, I sacrificed everything for one week. So when you get there, the, um, it's probably not going to be enjoyable as it should be because now you're thinking now I just, you know, I'm going home broke again. And that is the concept of you can't get from happy or from sad to happy. Um, you know, it, it starts with that choice and it's about, you know, rooting yourself in the present moment. This is a perfect classic example, I believe, of, you know, of waiting. Can I live my life fully? Um, you know, only when it's resolved. So she's asking, should I wait for it to get resolved? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Don't wait for anything. Set an intention, perhaps. And don't have any expectations of, of the outcome of it, for one. You know, you can hope for the best. Um, but as long as you feed that, as long as you place your attention over there in hopes of it getting better, it takes away from your present moment. And we know that the present moment is the only true reality that one has. And when you miss the now, as Eckhart says, you miss life itself. So you can't possibly be focused on waiting for the, you know, a futuristic moment to come and be rooted or even, even try to find some presence in that. It's just impossible to do that. You know, your mind can't be over there, um, you know, hoping and praying for that to happen all the time. So my, my advice or suggestion would be to um, let it be as it is for now. Do what you can in the moment to possibly change that situation and then get out of the way. Let it be, let it unfold as it may, um, because we are in control of nothing. We think we are, but the more we try to control something, the more it controls us. So again, if there's something you can do to help bring about this change, the resolve that you speak of, do it when you can in the moment and then allow it to be as it is. Allow it to unfold as it is, period. Get it off your mind because if that's on your mind, again, it's hard to honor your here and now, mm. you know, and, and we're going to go back to the law of attraction briefly for a minute. Um, you know, when you are focused on the absence of something, or the problem, you know, it's gonna get better. I know it's gonna get better. Um, and I have no clue what the situation is. Let's say um, we're waiting on some, an inheritance or, you know, my husband was in an accident and he's waiting on, you know, his settlement and then everything I know is gonna be okay. And we won't have to go through this financial struggle and the burden anymore, you know, always struggling day to day. and. Um, you know, as long as you're, you're and why are we focused there? Why? Because we're broke and I'm so sick of being broke. Well, as long as you're attentive, I'm just giving you an example of focusing on the problem. What you are doing is asking for more of that, more of what? More of the brokenness. You're on the wrong side of the stick. Allow it just to be and unfold. Um, you know, because no matter what the situation is, there is no guarantee that whatever it is you expect or think or was told is going to happen may or may not happen. There's no guarantee. So what if the resolve you're looking for, the resolve that you're waiting around for, never, 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 ever happens? <laughs> hmm. So you, you spent your whole life waiting on a resolve to start living. Nope, start living now. And the only way you can do that in a very productive way is by being wherever you're at fully, as Eckhart would say, 
and um, and just enjoy life. And perhaps if you raise them vibrational frequencies of yours and focused on some gratitude, maybe that resolve will come sooner than expected. Because if it's a beautiful thing you're waiting for, whether it's health or finances or <laughs> vacation, um, or Mr. Right to come walking through the door, whatever it might be, has a better chance of manifesting for you when you can find the same frequency of that in your own vibrational frequency. So if it's something good and it sounds like it's something great, I mean, if you're willing to wait around for this thing and perhaps put your life on hold, it sounds like a awesome thing could be coming your way yes um so align with that find that frequency you know and, and it's got to feel good don't focus on the absence of it you know and just I, I was just say just let it be as it is if you can do something to help change it do it now then get out of the way and allow it to unfold start living your life fully now you know be excited D do whatever is the most exciting to you that is available in any moment without any expectations of the results or the outcome. And that will lead you to the next most exciting available moment. And that moment will lead you to the next most exciting. What happens is awesome things start showing up in your life because that's what you're aligned with. That's a true story. And you can correlate these things by simply when something bad happens to you, you know, how was I feeling? You know, when this showed up, something good happens. Ask yourself briefly, how was I feeling? And that's something I did for a long time. And that's because I was having a little doubt about the whole, is this real? This law of attraction thing? You know, I didn't understand um, frequency or, you know, vibration. I didn't understand we were even vibrational beings for a long time in my life. So when I started learning and hearing about this and then experience it and then correlating how it was showing up, what was showing up in my life and why, you know, um, what was my point of attraction that this happened? I got to know. Um, and, and I'm one to say that the why just never, ever matters to me. It just never matters. Um, but it is showing me um, very strongly um, that this is real. So you don't attract what you want. You attract what you think and feel. So, you know, find a, find a, find some gratitude and get out of the way of whatever it is you're waiting for. Don't wait for it to happen before you start living your life because it may never. So I would just uh, say presence. Focus on your here and now, you know, and create the momentum of things that feel good. Because when you're focused on something like that, waiting, 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 and oh, my life will be better when it happens, creating momentum, but it's not good momentum. So throughout the day, uh, what we've been doing, you know, I got four or five new guys you know, that, um, that work with me now. And whenever somebody's, look at this, you know, it shows me a crazy video, whatever it is. You know, he's going, why do I don't want to do that? I don't want to see that. I don't want to talk about stuff like that. And they say, why? It's, it's crazy here. It's cool. It just doesn't make me feel happy and fuzzy. And I don't want to give my attention to anything that is low vibing. You know, he was saying, look at these shoes are like made out of humans. This girl said it. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's just crazy. Um, or whatever. Look at this dog attack this cat. No. I don't want to give my attention to none of that. And that's the same thing when a problem shows up in your life or a so-called problem. Stop it immediately. Do not let it gain any momentum. Zero. So when you find yourself maybe engaging in a conversation that you feel you may or may not have to address, nip it in the bud and stop and go the other way, whatever it takes. Because what you place your attention on, you, you know, you're strengthening it. You're growing it. What you feed grows. Your attention is the energy. And the energy is the food. So don't allow them bad things. You know, if you're having a great day or something, you know, it's like get up in the morning, everything's dapper, and you turn the corner and you stub your toe and you're like, mm, ah. 
then you turn the corner, oh, you're carrying that with you, and you're, you want to punch a wall. You go downstairs and you go to open the door and it's locked. When you thought it was open, then you hit your head. And you're, oh my God. And then next thing you know, you're cooking bacon and the bacon grease is splattered on you. So you jump and the whole pan's, it's just, you, know, you get that momentum going. And it's, did you ever, anybody ever notice this? You know, when it starts going bad, it goes bad. You're creating that momentum. And until you go, oh yeah, I got to take a break. You just got to go outside and just look at the flower for a minute. One in conscious breath usually does the trick though. But I'm just saying, don't let things gain, you know, that um, bad momentum. And if you're having a great day and you're feeling great, um, then somebody comes over to you and says, you know, whatever. But don't put your attention on nothing that don't feel good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caesar. Thank you for that. Oh God. Thank you for the good laugh. That was a great uh practical example. Uh it's funny, um, like today Summer was leaving me messages and she was talking about uh situation that she resolved there's some something she was trying to wait on um or she was working towards uh, recovery of uh, a deposit that she had on a car rental and she said the moment she took her attention off of she said oh let it go kind of kind of thing right the moment she said let it go they left her a voice me message that everything got resolved and she has a refund so what Caesar is saying is perfect. Uh, the more we are focused on it, what was the thing? I'm stuck with a situation where I think of one particular issue that needs to get resolved. It's like putting ourselves in a future moment, right? And that future moment is a thought. And that thought is just a mind projection and we are just in mental uh, movie making. We don't even know if that future is actually the future. So as uh, since we talked so much about Dr. Joe Dispenza, there are infinite possibilities. Maybe the future that you're wanting is not the future that planetary intelligence wants you to have. To sit, so sit in the wonderment of what you want, what experience you want to, um, Pull, right? So that's why that presence power, the generous present moment is needed. Thank you, Caesar. Uh, but it was so a synchronicity, right? That Summer gave me this example, like she left it in the morning and I could use it today. So brilliant, Summer. Thank you for leaving me messages about your experiences. Uh, Patricia, did you want to talk about this? And then I'll move to April if she has more insights on this. I'm stuck with the situation. I'm good. I, I completely agree with Caesar, and I am not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as funny as Caesar. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was a great, great example uh, aligned with what Eckhart says that, you know, that present moment, you can't live in the future. It's just not it's happening and giving attention to what's not working. Yeah, it's, 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 I guess it's more of a practical in this moment. Okay, I know the truth. I know the theory. But how do I really put my attention on the positive outcome or just on the present moment? If that emotion, you know, the fear maybe of anxiety or just this waiting is like still creeping up. So I'm kind of, you know, it tries to pull me like, you know, it's like, no, 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 pay attention to me, you worry, or no, you, you just, it's like, constantly, yeah. I'll let April answer that question. I just want to put it really quick. Um, like Eckhart says, just the awareness that you are not in the present moment is presence. The fact that you're catching that. Thank you, Caesar. Beautiful. And you attract and manifest according to an inner state. So that's another law of attraction from Eckhart itself. Go ahead, April. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Caesar. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can add more than what Caesar said. I mean, he answered it pretty completely and fully. Um, 
I completely agree. I would not wait. Um, I would do, you know, the visualization, the mental projection, the energy, the emotion change. Um, <clears throat> What about P Patricia's question? And then as far as, yeah, Patricia. Um, Thank you. So again, you, this takes practice. It takes practice to, but you are in the beginning stages because you are aware. You have created that awareness. You have created that separation of self. So now, instead of just being me, I'm just me, you now have the I and the I. You have the big I and the little I that Eckhart talks about, okay? You are no longer just this one being who is trapped by their thoughts, their emotions. You have created this larger sense of I that can become aware, and that is the first step. So from there, it really just takes practice and noticing that I'm having anxiety, noticing that I'm having fearful thoughts. That is the biggest step because without awareness, you're stuck. It is you. You are the fearful thought that is your life. So I think one of the biggest things for you is just to have some more patience. And it's, we need to think of this like a muscle. We're building it. So Eckhart doesn't talk a lot about energy, but what he actually is doing when he says, notice the anger coming. Anger is an energy. Anger presents itself in the body as a certain type of energy. Anxiety is another type of energy. Depression is another type of energy. So he doesn't use the terms energy, but they are energy. So when, um, you know, Caesar said it, Ken said, I'm sensing. Yes, you are now sensing. And when Poonam said, we are becoming more aware of our energy field. That is correct. That is what you're doing. So what I do with um, negative thoughts is one, you notice them. Two, you realize that most of the time the thoughts are not real. They're not rational. It is just the mind likes to think. It likes to always go towards the negative, the worst case scenario, because it's trying to protect you. It has to prepare for every little thing that's going to happen. You know, the cup's going to fall off the table. Oh, my God. You know, right. But. Is that the end of the world? Is that the worst thing? Really? So that's a lot of, <clears throat> and the other thing too, is that at some point in your life, you decided that things were more than you could handle. So from that point forward, you live in this defense mechanism that I need to project in the future, protect everything, stop everything, control everything so that I don't ever have to go through that again. But the reality is, you will go th through things in life and you will make it. That's the biggest thing. You are trying, we live our lives trying to protect ourselves from going through anything bad because, but you made it through, you, you did it, you survived and you will survive again. So having the faith that whatever comes to you, you will handle. You don't have to control everything to get it to stop. I know. You don't have to try to control everything so that nothing happens. You have to know and have faith that you will be able to handle what happens. Because you handled it before, right? I didn't say you liked it, but I said you handled it. So that's another thing with anxiety is stopping and telling yourself you know what whatever it comes i'm going to acknowledge it i'm going to accept it and i'm going to deal with it i step back into presence power i listen to what i need to do maybe i need to respond maybe i don't and then i proceed 
but I know that I have the faith that I'm going to deal with this. It's going to be okay. So that's, those are a couple of things that I do um, a lot. And I teach a lot when it comes to the anxiety, which by the way, the world is riddled with anxiety. So it's not just you. <clears throat> And it's a skill. It's a skill learning to rewire and retrain the brain to stop thinking that way. Thank you. Thank you. April. Thank you, April. I feel um, the way Abraham Hicks uh, talks about it, right? Um, what Caesar was saying, you can't get there from here. So we, we have to take minute steps to elevate our emotions, right? So let's say we were feeling disappointed. And it's not so much as I'm not going to pull a tub of uh, ice cream from the freezer and um, take a big ladle and, uh, you know, movies have this characteristic uh, thing that they show the, uh, the leading female um, actor is like getting a tub of ice cream from the fridge and then with a ladle she's eating the ice cream, right, sitting in her uh, robes, don't do that. That's not the right way. That is not the right way to handle a situation. So uh, what is going to get us out of, um, uh, I'm stuck with a situation where I think if one particular issue is resolved, then I can live my life fully. Um, so you're saying you're stuck or you're disappointed or some kind of negative emotion has taken over. Take a minute step to change it right? Like, um, let's say, uh, let's talk about this reservation. I'm not, I'm not getting the reservation in the right hotel, right? So what is the minute step that we can take? Is um, right now, is everything okay? Like Eckhart says, right? How is your life situation right now? Did you eat a full belly of food? You're good, right? So gratitude for that. That gratitude, right? Um, then look at the warm, how's the environment? Is it clean? Um, am I in a clean place? Do I have a clean bed to sleep in or the space that I'm sitting in? It's clean. Gratitude for that. So when we start to experience gratitude, in every little moment. And it's not so much as we are saying verbally, right? It may take um, initiative, if you don't have enough presence power, it may take um, physically, like verbally saying it, right? I am thankful for this cup of coffee, I'm thankful. So Louise has given me a mug of coffee and I hold it to my heart before I pour, my, I drink out of that coffee mug every day. Uh, every day in the morning, I had just have one cup of coffee, but I drink it in that mug. But I hold it to my heart because I feel her love coming through that mug of coffee, right? So I hold it to my heart for a few minutes before I set it down to get the coffee, uh, pour the coffee in it, right? Small things like that. Like when you're doing dishes, like then now you're going to take that coffee mug, like feel, experience the appreciation for whatever shape this mug may be in, right? And that'll start, that'll start generating that gratitude. The moment we start to experience that little shift in the emotional feel, then something else will happen. Then the synchronicity will happen. 
right? Like I was talking about red rose, like imagining a red rose. Uh, and like today I was so thrilled to know in that I was uh, just looking at the Facebook feed and Sandra had posted and Sandra used to attend our um, group meditations on Fridays. So she had posted like the exact red rose um, that I had imagined in my mind. Like I had imagined this vibrantly red, red rose and she actually posted a bunch of red roses as a picture. And I was explaining that, right? Like when we think a thought, the, we, we'd see a red rose, somebody somewhere, like a newspaper article will have a red rose, somebody wear a dress that has a red rose. So that synchronicity, right? Just like I told you about that Auschwitz, like I saw a documentary at work on Auschwitz. We were just having that conversation. We didn't say, I want to manifest more about this conversation, but that shows that that momentum is there, that we were having the discussion last week on Wednesday. And here, look at work now, they are actually showing as part of uh, uh, diversity and inclusion, they are actually showing how, how to generate loving kindness and compassion at work, right? So that you, uh, the moment, the fact that you notice that you are in negative state, that in itself, there is present power like Caesar was saying, right? And just because you have that presence power, now you have to go, how do I shift it without doing negative things like eating a huge big thing of chocolate cake? Or uh, I need to have like a slice of, you know, the mind will say all these things. I need to go to retail therapy. Now I need to go to Ross Press for less and buy all these unnecessary items. That is not going to be really helpful right? It's not helpful to the environment to gather unnecessary things anyway. That's material, right? We are going to throw it away at some point in time. So does that help, uh, Patricia? How to make like a small shift? Because what she says is from anger, you, you can get to frustration, but uh, from rage, you can get to anger. That is a shift. We, we kind of think that to feel angry is wrong, but if you were in rage and you were able to step down to anger, that is then that in itself is a shift in consciousness. From anger, if you were able to shift to frustration and annoyance, from frustration and annoyance, you were able to shift to irritation. From irritation, you were able to shift into, you're going to step down right? And that stepping down in the emotional or stepping up, raising your vibrational frequency is all that is needed. And gratitude is the easiest way, right? That's why, um, April, did you, didn't you suggest to write a gratitude journal in your session? Yeah, um, gratitude is very healing. It's one of, you know, the most healing things um, in, in all areas of life and creating peace and creating love, uh, changing your energy. Uh, the other thing is too that, um, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought because <laughs> I'm listening too much to the other side. So I just lost my, I know that there's something that I wanna say to you and I, I just lost it. Um, yeah, go back but, where you were in your present. Okay go back where I was right yeah, what um, you wanted to say when you look at me yeah you were talking about I'll, I'll remember in a second um gratitude uh and then like when we were in the session and I talked about the heart math putting the hand on the heart and breathing through the heart right. opening that heart space and I've talked about this on the live before that um you know just being thankful that you have sheets, that you have a bed, that you have pillows, uh, you know, those, just those little things in life. And as far as Abraham Hicks goes and, you know, other spiritual teachers, that sends a message to the universe of gratitude that you're thankful for what you have. And then therefore the universe, you know, brings more, it brings more. So I'll remember what I wanted to say in a second. I, I lost it. 
of I do have another question actually when you were talking about it. What I experienced through uh, going through journaling my gratitudes, when I started it a few months back, I could hardly find any. Like I had some, oh my God. Like I couldn't find. Then, oh, I know what I wanted to say. Go ahead. I know. Now I know that you said that. This is what I wanted to say. When you make peace with the things that have happened to you in your past then you are able to approach the world in a different space you are able to view the world in a different space and you're able to practice that acceptance you're able to practice that inner wisdom that inner knowledge the same one that God has, the same one that source has, the same one that he looks at us through. As we are doing all of our errors, he looks at us through this acceptance, this love, this unconditional love. So when you're able to actually make peace with the things that have happened to you in your past and see the reason for them, see the grander purpose for them, see how it has landed you right here tonight on this panel, then you can start to apply that to the things you see in the world. And you may not like those things, but you can know that there's a reason for those things. And you can be okay with that. Does that make sense? Everybody oh, understand yeah. that? That was very powerful. Yeah, thank you that you remembered. <laughs> well, almost, like a, almost like a step four writing everything down and then verbalizing it to someone else and then really forgiving yourself forgiveness for self and um being able to share it with others is 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 amazing rather than keep it inside my mind and uh, it's like writing if i'm journaling if i'm writing it enhances it's almost like an imprint where it really sinks in and it lands. And um, it's, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. So I, I love what you just said, April. I really, really did. It really helped me to, to see something. Thank you. The other suggestion that, um, did Caesar fall asleep, April? Should I stop his video? All right, thank you. He works late every, all the time. So okay. he's tired. <clears throat> Thank you. Especially Wait. after uh, answering that question for 20 minutes or so. <laughs> it's sad to say, it's sad to say. <laughs> it's perfectly delivered. So grace, mm -hmm. right? Grace comes in so many ways. Um, the other thing, um, the other suggestion I wanted to offer is um, think of something that you have unconditional love for, because that will change your state. For me, my son, I mean, I unconditionally, like when I think of him as a baby, uh, of how I, how I handled him, like perfect unconditional love. And I can go back to that state, like holding him like to my chest, like him waking up every day in the morning, like no matter that I worked full-time job, my morning focus was when my, once my son wakes up, he, he walks, whether, whether I woke him up as a baby or whether he walked down as a toddler, he would just jump into my lap and put his head down and sleep a little bit more, like five, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And that was like feeling his body against my body was the most precious memory that I can think of. Unconditional love, like uh, no, like that, that human is resting on you as though you are going to be their lifesaver, right? You're the end all be all, like you're almost like God to them. And here now they've, let go right like let go of their body like 
you know, the body falls on your body, right? Because yeah. they're still sleepy. They're still groggy when they wake up. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and even when they, they're about to fall asleep and you're like uh, rocking them, right? And then their body suddenly falls on your body, uh, like surrendered to your body, right? So just that, that memory, it'll put me back into unconditional love. Yeah, right. I've, been, I've been practicing also compassion. Um, I've been um, repeating mantra that um, Lakshmi gave us, the uh, Katruna, Ka, uh, Karuna Ham, um, because towards myself, um, because now, like I was starting to tell April, when I started writing gratitudes, then I was finding more and more and all of a sudden writing all of it but in the midst of writing it another fear came that if I forget to to be thankful for something then this thing will be taken (laughs) it's like now almost started to starting to be anxious about let me think, I have to say it everything. And then I would say, I'm grateful for everything because I, I wanted to make sure that I'm not missing, you know, that that was not a pleasant realization that moment. So then I had to, you know, be again, practice compassion to myself too, that I'm really, you know, looking for, and then the overwhelm sometimes comes because I, I now learn, thanks to all of you, this wonderful techniques. And when the moment comes, I almost don't know which one to use. It's like, oh my God, which one to use? Okay, which one would be perfect for the So again, my overthinking comes. So I had to observe it. And I don't know, is the OCD that you diagnosed in me <laughs> during the session? Which by the way, when you said it, so a matter of fact, after my question, I actually had to sit and observe myself because it was like a punch in the stomach. Uh, not that you meant it, but you, you just like, we went to something else, but I observe it as, as the thought, oh, there's another thing wrong with you. And then I had to sit and thanks, thank God it happened during that, um, during that uh, workshop because I was able to embrace it and just say, I'm not it, I'm not it. You know, that will bring me awareness that some of my thoughts, that's where it's, it's a condition, lets me observe it without the negative beating myself up for it. And I was fine after like 10 minutes, I was able to come back and enjoy the rest of the workshop. So, it almost was, yeah. Beautiful. That self-realization is amazing because that's, uh, I put my finger up to explain that. So when we gain a certain amount of presence power, we begin to understand if April were to say, um, Poonam, you, you looked irritable yesterday, right? I have to examine it. Hmm. right there's a reason why this moment happened and exactly what april was saying right when we have forgiven our past each and everything that arises in our present moment we have to see is it something that is a conditioned pattern that i need to heal or is it something that is just a test i already have healed Right. So when if April were to say, Poonam, you looked irritable yesterday, I'll go to that moment and see. So what a moment of grace to mean that answer, the question that comes from the other um, is a moment of grace because I look back in me. There, there's a person on our Facebook group that constantly tells me, Poonam, you're coming from the ego. Right. And then I look looking into myself am i coming from ego and i know that no because the other person can be at a different level of consciousness 
as well, right? They may be interpreting my uh, words as coming from the ego and I let it go, but I do examine it because it's a moment of grace. Each and every, like April was saying, each and every feedback, each and every content that is arising in our awareness is here to give us a spiritual lesson is helping us evolve. If I don't examine it and I go, I don't know, April is just saying what she's saying, then I'm not grown. I'm stuck. Mm. But because you allowed that spaciousness of, okay, she's saying that's OCD, right? It may sound like a punch in the face, but then if you look at your uh, pattern of taking something and then that is a pattern as well. Somebody says something and now I'll turn it into something negative. Yes. Instead of looking at it as a moment of grace. So what I would say is everybody, whoever is listening to this, if they can use their feedback, anybody giving feedback, right? Even the slightest feedback, Use it as a moment of grace because it's a holy instance. Why did we come together in this moment? Why, why is April saying, forgive your past and know from that forgiveness? You want to repeat that again, April? That was so beautiful. I want to listen oh, to it again. I don't. Am I in the same spot? I can say it again. <laughs> <laughs> it, did was I the one that said that she had OCD? Was that me? No, I, I said it. it. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> like, um, that come? She <laughs> said, she said um, Patricia said that she wants to be on time always. Mm. So um, we have to remember that it is, we are evolving and making progress, not perfection, right? We're not looking for perfection. And what I was trying to say was that, um, see, I forgot it again. So then what did I say? Remind me real quick so I can bring it back. What was you I said, you said, if you can go back in your past, okay. look oh, at yes. each event. Yes. When you make peace with your past, when you make peace with the events in your life, when you make peace with the abuse in your life, the neglect, with the things that have happened, when you make peace with those things, and then you find the reasons that those happened, why did they happen? What were they teaching you? And then you realize that all of those had to happen exactly as they happened to land you here tonight, November 17th, 2021, on a Facebook Live. At this stage, at this moment, when you do that, you incorporate that into you and you start to forgive you, the events, the people, situations. And then as you progress on this, you start to spread that out to the Walmart people to the lady at the gas station buying 50 lotto tickets. You start to spread that out to that person that flips you off when you're driving. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to respond. You can just send energy. You can just accept that that's where they're at because guess what? They didn't make peace with their past yet. And you get that because you were there. That is why my favorite saying is forgive them for they know not what they do. They really don't know what they do. I didn't know what I was doing when I did all that stuff. And trust me, I had some fire. I, I had fire, right? When you make peace with your past, then you can because you said, when should I respond? What if I don't respond? It, you, will, you won't feel that feeling of, I have to respond. I have to do something. I have to say something. Because you will come from a space of acceptance of all. 
which is how God source looks at us. Acceptance of all. He doesn't look at acceptance of all. Oh, you big dummy. Acceptance of all. Okay, my child, I will wait. And I look at the world and I'm not saying that in the ego way. Oh, my child. But I look at the world and I'm like, okay, well, that is where you are. And I really hope that, you know, I hope that I see that you're on your journey and I see that um, you got a little bit of work to do. And I'm not saying that in a judgmental way or that I'm higher than or what I'm just saying, I'm able to mm-hmm. notice that I'm able to give that compassion. I'm able to give that love and I'm able to accept that without judgment. I'm not saying where you are is bad and where I am is good. I'm just saying, I know where you've been. I know why you're angry. I know why you're intolerant and the grocery, I get it. Right? Does this make sense? Right? So when you make peace with your past, if you haven't made peace with your past yet, then these things that happen in our life are what we call emotional triggers and you get triggered and you feel like you got to jump in and you feel like you got to say something. And sometimes you do. Sometimes action is appropriate. But when you come from this space of acceptance, of oneness, of love, compassion, understanding, then you don't necessarily have to do that. You just have to spread the energy of love. Right? And I'm again, I'm not saying you don't ever respond, but again, we're looking for evolving, not perfection. You cannot achieve a per- we cannot achieve perfection. It's not achievable. And for the perfectionist, there's always something else. Right? You clean that whole house. It's spotless. Everything's shiny. I used a whole bottle of Windex. Sit down. I really, I really like that when... one spot over there. That one spot yeah. that right there. Right? Yeah, you won't sleep. <laughs> there you uh, the perfectionist cannot achieve perfection because there's always something else so eliminate perfection period eliminate it don't even try we're not looking for perfection we're looking for that's good enough i'm good enough i really like when we use during workshop that um metaphor of building walls to protect our heart but they're really not doing its job because we still get hurt. That was it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. So if my aim of self-defenses and everything that I built was to protect me, my heart, but obviously I've been hurt since all the time. So that's not the way. Right. It's not the way. When uh, I think, yes, what, what, April was just saying, I think before I used to think everything was happening to me, like I'm being punished, people are hurting me, and I was full of pain and suffering. And as I started waking up and, and, and stepping into a higher level of consciousness, I'm realizing that everything is happening for me. And I'm even starting to look at there was nothing negative and nobody did anything to me. That was just my stinking thinking and now everything that happens i'll say thank you and have gratitude and what i'll do is i'll go inside and i'll say if there's pain that i need to feel feel it just be in the present moment and whatever comes up allow myself to embrace it and many many things in my shadow i've tried to deny disown I try to uh, say, how can I get rid of this? And I'm realizing that those different parts of me was just looking to be loved and realizing that everything on this planet wants to be loved. And when it does, everything changes. So it's beautiful. Great, great session tonight. I love it. Thank you so much, Ken and April. And Patricia, what I wanted to say is then the second part of when you thought 
a blind spot and you heard about your relative having an issue with her eye, cancer in her eye, and you immediately thought you manifested the cancer in the eye. Look at how everything turns negative. Mm. Mm. Wow. Instead, instead of saying that maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't be focusing on, all it is is a sign that I shouldn't be focusing on anything being a blind spot. That's all it was. Like it was something like what I was saying during the workshop, right? The present moment is very neutral. The naked isness of the present moment is just, it is. But then we add this baggage of, mm. oh, I may have manifested that uh, cancer for my relative on, right? I, I, would, I would have, uh, just because I was thinking of blind spot, no. I mean, seriously, I, that, that thought, yeah. I, I was, whoa. We like, cannot, we like cannot I, affect, we cannot affect another person. They manifest their illness by themselves out of their limiting beliefs. Each human is co-creating their own reality. We have nothing to do with their reality. Mm. Their personality is creating their personal reality. So when, when certain situations are the messages for you and when they're not? I, I think you should keep discussing it um, at some point in time, your presence power, just like how April was able to see her past, right? And this is exactly what I stated in and um, a lot of people accepted it, right? Like I can go back even as a four-year-old child or a five-year-old child, I co-created each reality. I can see how my emotional field at that moment, and that's where I have the compassion for the other as well as for myself, that those were lessons of forgiveness. Those were lessons of gratitude. Those were lessons of acceptance. I had such a stubborn, rebellious, like April says, right? I was very stubborn. Internally, like externally, I was very soft-spoken and I would be very meek and shy, but internally I was very stubborn. And so the uh, physical abuse of my mother, I understand she's getting that stubbornness out of me. Mm. I was, she's, yeah, I got the same treatment. Too she's, well. she, she's, a, what is attracting that is she's trying to whack the ego out of me. Planetary intelligence in that angel who's my mother is trying to whack the ego out of me and I'm not getting whacked, right? Like I have to leave her uh, to actually get rid of it. And like April says, all that brought us to 10 years of spiritual practice, 15 years of searching spiritual work, being here. And this is grace and beautiful and sweet and precious that I met April, I met Lakshmi, I met and Lakshmi is online, and hi, Lakshmi. And then we did workshops, and we're having a jolly good blast of a time. So let's have this blast of a time, right? I was so elated. I was, you know, I almost saw like light around me in the mirror. It was, it was beautiful. Perfect. Okay, let's keep this going. Are y'all going to be here next week because it's Thanksgiving week or should we not have the Facebook Live next week? I I won't be here. I'll be at I'll be at my friends for dinner. So on Wednesday, right? On Thursday. Oh no, what about on Wednesday? Wednesday. I'm sorry. Yes, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Yes, I'll be here on Wednesday. Uh, April, will you be able to make it? Um, I should be able to. Awesome. Okay, so I'll keep the schedule and we will meet on Wednesday next week. Before I announced it, I wanted to make sure that people would be here because I cannot have this session all by myself. This conversation is what makes it a blast, right? Incredibly amazing. So we can have our own little spiritual Thanksgiving uh, on Wednesday. To Perfect. share gratitudes for, you know, with each other. Perfect. We'll start off with that on Wednesday.
Thank you so much, everyone. I cannot thank, thank you all you. enough. It's like infinite gratitude and many blessings. Much love. Much, have a wonderful Bye. evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.